Hey, uh, am I on? Uh, yep. Have you opened the link that I've sent? Hey, everybody. Jay Widener here. We're going to try something different tonight on Reality Check. <clears throat> I hope we don't have too many problems. <clears throat> Basically, I'm going to take some of your questions. I'd like you to put them in all caps so I can know which ones are questions and which ones are comments, and I will only comment on the questions. So we're... Um, I've already been asked if I work for the government <clears throat> and no, I do not work for the government. I don't really like to talk about uh, politics either, not too much. So um, <clears throat> anyway, we're in the middle of a big, huge change and um, uh, we can see it with what's happening in Canada. And I think we should all be like wondering what's, what's the next phase of all this. And um, uh, so I just think we should get ready and be wary and prepare because things are going to get really weird. Who built the star forts? <clears throat> That's a good question because I actually did a deep, uh, I did a dive into a star fort in New Mexico that is now gone, but you can still see the traces. And, um, I, I heard from the forest service person, the pedigree and, it all made kind of sense of why they put the star fort there. So I've only looked at one star fort. That's the only one. And it actually made sense. They were building it uh, during the civil war. So anyway, can you speak more on toroidal energy and alchemy? Let's see here. I'm definitely a sativa guy. Um, <clears throat> well, it's just that the, uh, the universe is a fractal and the fractal is, you know, as you pierce down into a fractal, each aspect of the fractal reflects the larger aspects. And uh, that's how uh, the toroidal energy works. It's fractal. So the more you fall into the toroidal energy, uh, uh, the more it looks like a fractal. Well, <clears throat> I have to say, um, I forget his name, but the Swedish physicist, who teaches uh, physics at uh, Oxford said that if you want to find out if we're living in a simulation, computer simulation, then what you would want to do is you'd want to go look into the past and find anomalies because the computer programmers would not spend as much time programming the past as they would the present and the future. So <clears throat> I think that I've gone in and there are a lot of anomalies in our past indicating that this might be a simulation. So I don't know. I hope not, but it may be. What do you think about Russia invading Ukraine? I hope they don't. I hope we don't get into a war. Um, I, 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 I pray we don't get into a war. It really makes me ill to think about it. Um, but uh, it looks like we might be heading to a war and uh, let's pray and hope that that doesn't happen because that's not gonna be good. And, um, but you know, again, I don't wanna talk about politics, but our leaders are such an income poops that <clears throat> you can't trust them. You just can't trust them. Yeah, they're just, you can't do it. What are we in terms of a new kind of, how do we balance or resist the truth of spiritual ascension? Well, I always say that if you want to resist the, uh, the empire that's around us, you have to do it in your home and within your community. So you need to practice, you know, things and do things. I think my uh, last talk on alchemy, uh, I suggested a whole bunch of stuff and I would suggest that you, uh, that you go back and listen to that one because that was fairly comprehensive. Um, we live in, a, uh, in, a, in an ether. Uh, th all around us is ocean of ether. It's invisible. And we have an influence on that ether. And our leaders don't believe that there is this etheric world around us. The kind of, I don't know, atheists, agnostics, whatever. And so <laughs> we have superpowers that they don't know about and that we don't know about. And that is our ability to consciously direct the etheric forces to our advantage. And that's what alchemy is and consuming light and uh, a lot of other things. What are my favorite books? Um, I'm gonna do a whole show on that because it's just no way in the world I can sit here and ad, uh, ad lib that one. 
Uh, there's so many good books for different reasons and <clears throat> and all that. And uh, and so um, who who do you get advice from or a person you look up to? Um, there's a few. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, William Irwin Thompson wrote a bunch of really great books. I think uh, Robert Lawler wrote a bunch of great books. Um, I think, um, forget his name, uh, he was a yoga uh, writer. He, he wrote very powerful books on yoga. Uh, again, I'll put those in my, uh, my collection. You know, is Bitcoin a trap? <clears throat> yes and no. Um, <clears throat> it's not really a trap. If you're, if you're a dishonest person, then it might be a trap because everything that you spend is on the ledger. So it's open though, and no one can spend money without everybody else knowing it. So Bitcoin is really a tool that we need in our toolbox right now because um, uh, of the collapse that's going on around us. And, and we need to have avenues of escape and avenues of being able to deal with each other across borders and across country lines and all that. And we need to do it, um, you know, soon. And I would buy it now because you're going to get caught in the end. Oh, my goodness. Doug Boat. I don't know. I, I know Doug Boat very well. I used to hang out with him. Uh, and I, but I don't know what the Die Hold Foundation or what that's about. But uh, Doug Volt's a very, very, very intelligent guy. I will say that. With your most recent experience, in, I mean, well, yeah, I did not have the, the Bigfoot experience. A very, very good friends of mine did. Uh, people I consider very credible. And um, I have those seen tangible evidence that the uh, Sasquatch is in my area. So I know they exist. I don't believe that they're magical beings. I believe they're animals, um, mostly human um, though, I think, uh, I don't know. I, I gotta go back here, I'm losing some of these. Well, I'm expecting a major event on 2-22-2022. I would say that they might be planning an event like that because they like to do their numerology. So. I would expect maybe something weird to happen tomorrow. Yeah, I hope it isn't war. I do not know about Aramu Muru. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Is going into the light a soul trap? Well, again, yes and no. Um, Gurdjieff thought that the moon was a soul trap and that when you go towards the moon, when you die, you'll get trapped and then recycled. And so he kind of urged you to stay away from, from the light. Um, you really don't have to worry. I, I think that if you've lived a good life, you're gonna have a lot of assistance uh, on the other side, uh, 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 angelic assistance, I guess. <clears throat> and I think you're gonna, um, and I think that they, they will guide you to what is ever your next step uh, in the spiritual journey that, that you're on. So. I'm, I'm, you know, I've had near-death experiences, and uh, I know that uh, I'm being watched over by something spiritual that uh, uh, wants me to succeed at what I'm doing. So, uh, is uh, is the falling into the light a soul trap? I don't know. I I, I don't think so, though. number 22 well the number 22 is that uh is of course uh um seven times uh pi and uh <clears throat> it's uh, 22 letters of the hebrew alphabet and um it's a lot of other things and uh, so it's a very powerful number and um uh we are living in the time of two twos right now. We have been since 2020 uh, and every year has been, you know, some mix of two and two and um, it kind of makes your head spin, but uh, uh, they do use numerology. Remember the trick is, is that they have to tell us what they're doing before they do it. 
that's kind of for some reason that's the law so and now we're getting really good at um predicting what they're doing next so i think that's one of the reasons for the great reset and all the nonsense for the last two years and and all that other stuff so i will look up doug vote and his stuff uh, he's always an interesting guy um, i went to his house one time he had this incredible um uh pattern in the floor they put in wood tile that was like an optical illusion so when you stood in in this pattern you felt like your head was spinning and, and I, I dug those it took like months put each piece in and uh you know eccentric funny guy very much of the woo speaking of the moon what the heck is it <clears throat> and yes i do use astrology in my life uh speaking of the moon what the heck is it uh, the moon is an artificial construct that is working in a concert with another artificial construct that we call Saturn. And the two work together as a controlling mechanism over us. And that's why we're so affected by full moons and new moons and uh, different phases of the moon and why dark magicians uh, use uh, the full moon as uh, their kind of weapon. They they blast the full moon and bounce it back down on their opponents or their enemies. And uh, I have to do special practices every full moon because, you know, I get bombarded by people who don't like me. But yeah, the tarot has 22 cards. That's right. Uh, and the, uh, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so uh, the, the moon is a mental changer. And, and it's also, if you think about it, it's on like a 28 plus day cycle. And so is Saturn on a 28 year plus cycle. So nearly 29 years on that cycle, and only nearly 29 days on the lunar cycle. So there's this weird synchronicity between the two orbits. And so uh, a good astrologer should look into that and figure out when Saturn and the moon are in certain places uh, and then they'll be able to predict when calamities come uh, and that kind of thing. So the moon is, you know, super powerful. I think it's an artificial thing brought here by somebody. Um, uh, there's Native American tribes in Patagonia and Bolivia who remember a time when there was no moon at all. I don't know if that's true or not. It would seem like you would have to have a moon to have tides and you would have to have tides to have life on land because you need that little inter interspatial area between the water and the land for life to form so i don't know um it's i i don't know if, if you can not have a moon but you should think about this <clears throat> this is something that really does not get thought about or taught about very much. And that is the absolute special place that we find ourselves in the universe. That we were in per a place of you know, perfect, you know, heat, uh, temperature. Our planet is a perfect temperature. It doesn't get too hot or too cold. Uh, we have a moon that, you know, is exactly the same size as the sun when they pass over each other during an eclipse. We're, we have a, we, we live in this incredibly uh, a place that uh, if it wasn't invented by um, uh, intelligent beings, then it has to be the most incredible series of amazing coincidences uh, ever. Uh, that we could be so fortunate to have a planet exactly in the zone that we're in, exactly with the things that cause life to happen. And we, I don't think we think about that enough. You know, I don't think we, we think about how friggin' lucky we really are. Yes, the Knights Templar. Well, I don't know if they're good guys. The Knights Templar were converted to Islam through... Um, What's his name of the mountain? Uh, uh, he was this madman that lived in the mountain, John of the Mountain, or I forget his name now. But anyway, he was a he was Islamic, and he converted the Knights Templar. So when uh, King Philip the Fair infiltrated the Knights Templars in in 1300, um, 
he came back and told the Pope and, and King, uh, uh, the King that, you know, they were doing anti-Christian rituals, rituals that mocked Jesus. And I, you know, I have to say that, you know, that might be true. And um, they, 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 they do appear the Freemasonic um, outline and structure that we got from uh, the Knights Templars <clears throat> is Islamic in its order and in its creation. And I'm not alone on this. There's been Indra Shah has written many books about um, how the uh, Sufis had this huge influence uh, on, on, the, on the Knights Templars. And we look and immediately, as soon as they get back from the Holy Land, they begin funding and building cathedrals, which are very close to what mosques are, um, if you think about it. And um, uh, so you have to wonder uh, what cathedrals really are, what mosques really are. Um, what does any of it, you know, really mean? And when you start looking into, you know, Tartaria and ancient maps and, um, and that kind of thing, you really begin to realize that we don't know jack about anything, uh, that our, our view of history is, is completely wonky and um, anything could have happened. Uh, we have short memories. Uh, we don't even stay together in villages anymore. Everybody's moving around. And um, so, yeah, I, I am gonna do some more stuff on, on Tartaria, especially the mysterious construction of, um, of San Francisco. I used to live in San Francisco and I now realize that it's just about impossible for San Francisco to become as big as it became in the 1850s and uh, for the number of buildings that got built there and that kind of thing. Uh, let's see, what else we got here? So uh, Hyperborea, if you're talking about um, uh, 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 mysterious land to the north of us, uh, as featured in famous Conan the Barbarian books, um, I think that there could have been one time a, a, a civilization up there. I know that Jocelyn Godwin has done a great book called uh, Arctos, I think it was, about uh, a lot of the lore. And of course, we know that um, we know that uh, uh, the white race was start, uh, first white people were started 8,000 years ago in, you know, northern Sweden, which is way up there. And um, so, you know, do I think it, I think it could have been at one time. Yeah, I don't know if it's still there. I know there's some guy on the internet who's uh, walking to the North Pole right now. Ryan, Ryan Zeem, I think, or something. Anyway, um, you know, uh, Godspeed, man, walking to the North Pole at this time of the year. I don't know. What are your thoughts on reincarnation? Yes, I did a past life therapy one time. Uh, with a very, very good person. And um, I had a very, very real experience where I was um, uh, a very, very old French man with an incredible library. And um, I lived in this huge house and our mansion, old style European mansion with uh, stained glass windows and it was all very alchemical and Tartarian. And um, so that, yeah, I've had uh, a couple of those in my life. And um, uh, yeah, what happens is, is that your soul, your, your, your toroidal field uh, at death collapses down all the way down to your spine. And then once it uh, gets all the way down to your spinal level, at the bottom of your spine, it collapses in and starts going up your spine and it goes out the top of your head and you begin, um, you begin um, traveling down this like little tiny tunnel called the Shashuma, which is from the Vedic lore. And then you enter into the larger plasmas uh, Tor Taurus, which is around the earth, which is divided up into seven layers. And whatever life you lived on this earth determines which of the layers that you get to go to for what you have to learn next. And then when you're done learning, you can either 
uh, depending on what layer you're at, you can either leave or go back for more lessons. And, and I, I, I really believe that that's what's going on. That explains these children that have amazing memories of past lives. And uh, I mean, how would they know some of the things like uh, details of the Civil War or, or World War II? It just seems like it just seems incredible. Anyway, let's keep going here. Get some pretty good questions here. I'm about 20 minutes into this. All right. The sun has been acting up lately. It certainly has. <laughs> the hidden true history uh, history is not a simulation. It's just a big lie. Yes, the Vikings probably did mate with the Native Americans. It was many blue-eyed Native Americans when the first European, well, the second wave of Europeans arrived after the Vikings, of course. The Vikings had, uh, I think there were many races here in America. I think there were Black people, white people, Asians, the giant Asian colony near Vancouver, like 350, 400 years ago. Um, so I don't think uh, what we're seeing, I've seen um, drawings of uh, Native Americans that were African looking with, with the African hair and dark skin and the African features. We know the big heads in uh, Guatemala, um, of the, of the Africans, and they looked like they were African giants actually. Um, yeah, so this, this uh, America was covered with had um, giants. And then, you know, more and more races actually came in. And eventually, the giant redheaded uh, uh, died out or, or genocided, probably. <clears throat> and then uh, the Native Americans took over, and then the Europeans invaded. And now everybody lives here, which is fine. Love it. Um, so, let's see. Let's see here. What's going on in Antarctica? I believe Antarctica is, um, is of course, where the uh, secret space program is. So they don't have to fly through the Van Allen belts. So there's a base down there, probably underground. And you would, you know, they probably shoot it in the middle of the night so nobody can see it. Nobody can see it anyway because it's in the bottom of the world. So, um, yeah, I think the secret space program is there. I think there's a lot of ruins also. And, um, yeah. Uh, it's the perfect place if you think about it. Nobody can see you. You don't have to go through the Van Allen belts. You're perfectly hidden. Uh, you probably put some nuclear reactors there and keep yourself warm forever. So, is silver knife sufficient to cut mistletoe? Yes. You should try to use gold, but a uh, silver knife will work. Um, gold knives are really hard to find. So, but don't use anything else. If you use, uh, if you use uh, anything else, you're going to short out the mistletoe. That's what you don't want to do. Do not short out the mistletoe. So, um, uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in Antarctica. Uh, actually, very fascinating. I um, did a show with uh, Eric uh, Eric Helder, I think his name was, on how we get down to like the base there is a uh, 7,000 feet high, I think he said, or was it 9,000 feet high? Can you imagine being, you know, in that freezing cold weather at 9,000 feet? I mean, it would be like, I don't know. But folks, we are at a, at a place where um, you do have to start taking care of yourself and you have to create a community and you, um, and you need to, um, uh, it's just it, it, the writing's on the wall. And we can see now that they're going to, you know, take our accounts and freeze our accounts and do whatever it is they want. So, um, you know, it's, 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 um, it's a scary time in a lot of ways. And uh, so it, in those times, then you have to then come together in whatever community that you can muster to help you and you need to start growing your own food. It's gonna get more and more important. I saw this great video of um, some kid in I think Central America and he took Coke, uh, plastic Coke bottles and he cut them in half and then he drilled hole through them uh, with the open side up and he um, took a cable of about 15 or 20 of these, you know, in a row and put dirt in them and then grew lettuce. He had a whole wall of lettuce growing that 
I bet you there must have been 60 plants on this one wall. Then he was growing 60 plants of lettuce. <clears throat> you know, it, that's the way we have to start thinking. We have to, we have to, um, we have to uh, uh, think in imaginative ways on how we're going to get to to uh, a place where we don't need the centralization uh, and um, you know that, that's really what, what we have to do and do you have an opinion on it James from you anyway well I mean my work on the cross of Hende says that yeah we've been we get hit by coronal mass ejections major solar flares plasma storms quite frequently and um, the one in uh, 13,000 years ago nearly wiped us out and yeah we could we could get hit by something like in one minute and could put us back in the sixth century uh, uh, BC and um, you know that's the way it is and uh, uh, we are taking any precautions uh, all, all of our electronic equipment's going to get fried we have never been in a really bad one we had the Carrington effect in 1859 but uh, that was not even a really big one so um, yeah it's 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 a time for us it really is the fourth turning. There's like six different cycles coming to an end right now. And um, uh, it's going, you need to, you need to um, take as many precautions as you can. I would have very much think that um, asking the spiritual world for help is probably a really good idea right now. It's gonna, you're all gonna have to become really brave. Um, you know, we're now raising chickens, we're probably going to get a cow and goats and, um, I'm really kind of hunkering down and digging in on, on my little piece of land here. And, um, uh, you know, it feels good. I, 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 I want to go out, but, you know, the price of gas is, is getting so high that it's now I just, you know, I go out as much as I want to. So, um, you know, uh, just just take care of yourself. I really, you know, I, I can't emphasize it enough. I laugh, what we've seen in the last week has just been kind of shocking, especially the one country would never expect is the nicest, friendliest, most civilized country on earth. That's Canada. And so, you know, it was a real jaw dropper. I read an article today from 2014 Huffington Post. I put it up on my Facebook. It said uh, uh, Trudeau had just been elected, and it said Trudeau will bring Canada a dictatorship. 2014, eight, nine years ago, almost, no, eight years ago. All right, so what is the name of the safe caves in South America? Okay, so the Cross of Hende, um, uh, May, uh, the Cross of Hende points towards these caves in Peru around Cusco. So I went there in 1997 and these caves were everywhere and you could go way deep into these, uh, into the Andes Mountains. Um, uh, Pizarro uh, um, uh, talks about them, his, uh, uh, the Inca talk about these uh, tunnel systems that run under the Andes that were made by some long ago uh, uh, civilization, and they were made for the extent purposes of getting out of the disaster. So um, I, I wrote my book in 99, my first book, and um, talked extensively about it. And then I went back for another visit in 2007, uh, 10 years later, and um, <laughs> there were armed guards in front of all the caves and uh, you couldn't go anywhere near them. And um, so I believe I accidentally alerted the uh, Peruvian authorities, you know, that, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, anyway. I wish I hadn't done it in a way because, you know, they really were. But there are there are other cave systems. There's cave systems here in Colorado. Um, is there still any affordable land in Colorado? Yes, there is. Um, but you have to go out of the way. Not, not, not near the cities and not near uh, 
um you know like you know front range you're not going to find anything um you have to get way far away um you can probably buy five acres for a hundred grand in some places although i've seen a hundred hundred acres for i think it was like uh 75,000. I'm sure that it was pretty, pretty rustic. But um, yeah, you can still get affordable land, but not for long. Um, the uh, Colorado is um, Californians, Floridans, and New Yorkers uh, are pouring into Colorado and changing the political landscape very, very quickly. And um, it's a really sad to see. It really is. Um, and, uh, you know, what can we do? There's nothing we can do about it. I was in the coffee shop in line and some guy I'd never seen before was in front of me and he starts talking to me. I said, so where are you from? He goes, I just moved here from California. I said, oh, really? Well, can you do me a favor? And he said, what? I said, please don't vote. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But, um, you know, that's sort of how I feel about the whole thing because, they're, they're really coming in and kind of screwing the place up. And we're growing so fast that we even have traffic now. And we never used to have that. So everybody's pouring into the country right at the time that the country is, you know, completely falling apart. And, you know, I, I really wish that, that that wasn't happening, but it is. So, um, yeah, I'm grateful I own my own land. Trust me, I'm every day I thank the universe that I have my ranch. And I have my uh, fruit trees and my berries and my my uh, food forest and my chickens and my beds and and all the stuff I got. You know, it took years to build it, cost a lot of money, but um, here we sit. You know, and it's like you know, it's uh, it's it's it just feels good. And um, buying an electric go kart uh, should be here any day. Uh, it's just this little tiny, that tiny go-kart, but it has a, a top to it and a radio and air conditioning. <laughs> and, and it gets 60 uh, miles on one charge. So, um, yeah, head to the caves. So the, ca the cataclysm that we, we will have some, some for uh, knowledge of the cataclysm. There will be, you know, big, huge storms on the sun and and you're going to see all sorts of uh, things uh, with the electromagnetic fields going crazy and, and all of that. So, yeah, we're going to have uh, uh, some warning, uh, but not much. And, um, you know, it's uh, it's going to be funny. It's uh, it's uh, it's. It's what happens, you know, it happens at the end of uh, every, every Kali Yuga. We get to uh, this, um, you know, these storms. And you, you may know that all the gas giants are lining up on the far side of the sun from us. So the sun is here, we're here, and they're right here. And what people aren't thinking about is a gravitational pull is going to pull the earth away from the sun. So it's going to get colder um, and colder. So um, I really do believe we're going into some kind of um, uh, ice age, but it's going to be like in this ice age, you're going to have parts of the world that are going to be densely freezing cold and other parts are going to be in super drought. And where I live is going to be in a super drought. And, um, and just north of, of me, um, it's going to be freezing cold. So anything above 38 degrees uh, is going to be freezing cold. And then there's going to be a gigantic drought. And some places like um, Alaska will turn into a drought too, um, I believe. And um, so I think that's what's going on here. Uh, Scott Stevens came on here on my show and said, this is all being directed. Um, he gave a pretty good explanation for how they're doing it. I don't know, but um, I know that um, this happens on a cyclical basis. So um, he, uh, this is what 
this is what we do. This is, you know, this is what we're going to have to go through. Uh, humans have been going through this for a long time. Uh, this is going to force us back into communities. This is going to force us back into uh, um, into uh, being more close to each other, more appreciative. A close, a close person of mine um, had a, a very terrifying accident recently, and she, um, you know, she, you know, had a traumatic uh, brain injury, and um, uh, it was it was awful. But in that moment of coming face to face with her mortality, she became a different person, and a nicer person, a more tolerant person. And it's been fascinating to watch this happen. And I think that's how we're going to be while we face this crisis. We're going to be more on our guard uh, for invasion and people coming in and trying to take things and, and, and force themselves on us. But we're also going to be closer to our friends and our family. And, uh, and that's the good side of the whole thing. So, um, you know, it's going to be really tough between now and, uh, and 2030. We've got eight long years of this going on, and it's a war between uh, uh, the uh, rulers of the of the universe, like the Davos crowd, and the truckers. It's a war between Davos and the truckers, and we're the truckers, and um, uh, they um, are so alienated from this world that they don't know how much they need truckers. Truckers. And, um, and uh, so they need us more than we need them, is what I'm saying. And we may have to um, start showing it. And uh, here's the other thing is what's gonna prevent these truckers from just going on strike now? So, you know, you gotta wonder what's, what's gonna happen next. Anyway, yes, I, you know, I'm, the best thing we've got going for us right now is we live in a constitutional republic. We still have a Supreme Court. Um, that, that can rule against the medical tyranny. So, you know, um, as far as countries go, we're actually in some of the best positions and uh, uh, then say Europe or Asia, you know, and so I, I, I'm feeling very, very um, positive about our future. I, I, I see that because one of the things that happened with this trucker thing is it made them show their hand too early. And um, so now we see how they're gonna freeze accounts and, and all that stuff. So now we see what they're gonna do. And I don't think they wanted us to know that for at least another year or two. So um, so there's, there's good things that are, are going on. And um, so you, know, you have to figure it out. If they're gonna freeze your account, then Bitcoin really is our only way out because they can't freeze Bitcoin, they can't. You, you can't freeze Bitcoin. They can't infiltrate it. Um, so, um, so, uh, and again, if you, if the, if people had given Bitcoin to the truckers instead of going through uh, GoFundMe, then they would have gotten the money right away. So, you know. Anyway, Purple Power. Hey, how you doing, Ken? Nice to see you the other day. Well, I've been at this for 40 minutes, which is much longer than I thought I would be because I've never done this before. And I'm not really a big fan of live events because I'm afraid I'm going to say something I'm later going to regret. And, um, uh, you know, uh, can they freeze their wallets? So then you don't want to have your crypto on a wallet. You want to have it on a physical wallet if, if that's what it is. And yes, you want to have gold and silver and copper and, <laughs> and lead. Don't forget lead. Lead's a very, very, very important rare element. And lead uh, with copper is even a better rare uh, uh, element to have. So, um, so definitely, you know, um, get your uh, metals together. And um, I'm not throwing anything away. I've got like about 40 pieces of PVC in my uh, carport. I've got pipes, you know, I've got um, uh, 
I'm not throwing anything away. I, I was about to throw away before the COVID a bunch of little tiny pieces of board, like two by fours. You know, I had in a big bucket. I, said, I don't need this. I saved them. It turned out to be the greatest thing I ever had because now I'm using them for all sorts of stuff. I can't get lumber anymore at the lumber yard anymore. They don't have it or it's too damn expensive. Um, my refrigerator went out and I realized that that soon I may not be able to buy a refrigerator because uh, you literally won't be able to find one. So I went out and I bought two refrigerators. If you can believe that. And then I was thinking about it. So I went out and I bought two blenders, two food processors and two espresso machines. Cause I'm like thinking, well, what happens if my blender goes out? I'll never have another blender again. Maybe. Yes. Uh, I did not build my chicken house. I bought it pre-built, but it's a really nice chicken house. And, my chickens are very happy, and uh, the uh, bobcats and the coyotes um, have done their best to break in, but they they have failed at all costs. And um, and uh, you know, I, I, I'm always one step ahead of the wildlife here. We have a we have a gang of coyotes of about 40, 40 or fifty coyotes, and they surround the house because we have the chickens at uh, sunrise and sunset and they howl for like an hour and it's it's kind of creepy to be honest with you <laughs> and uh and the bobcats we have here are the size of like german shepherds they're huge and um but i love my wildlife so i'm not complaining i also have a horned owl that sits in the tree right over that way at night and you can see his horns and he's about i'd say two and a half three feet maybe and he just hoots at me while i'm outside and um so anyway you know it's, it's great living out in the country um also have eagles that come by and hang out rabbits and um they get chased down by the bobcats and the uh and the coyotes and so we're, we're overrun with uh with uh rabbits right now because they're you know procreating like crazy so you look out the door and there's like 20 rabbits go scattering every time but by the end of may there won't be any left um uh because uh, they will all become food for the uh predators so yeah you know i always have something uh amusing to watch um haven't seen bigfoot yet maybe i will um yeah, so I think that's probably enough questions being answered for now. I can't think of anything else I have to say. Um, make sure you guys hit like and subscribe and all that other stuff. And let's uh, talk again sometime. I got more great uh, uh, programming coming. I'm downloading a, a whole bunch of, uh, of stuff on the... Um, on alchemy and a lot of other downloads I want to get out before uh, the crackdown comes and I can't talk freely as I can right now. Um, I don't think that the YouTube fact checkers can figure out, you know, exactly what I'm talking about. Um, <clears throat> you know, so anyway, I'm with you. Thanks you guys for watching. And uh, I want to thank my producer for helping me tonight. And uh, goodbye, good night, and good luck.